Hello everybody, it's Anne Murphy here. I'm just going to check that I'm um, live in the group and wait for everybody to jump on live. I've got the fan blowing um, my notes all over the, the shop so I don't know how, um, how I'm going to do that. I'll just wait um, a little while for people to jump on. Yep, I'm here. So welcome everybody. It's um, Anne Murphy here from Domesticity, and tonight I'm really excited to uh, talk to you about how to avoid clutter coming into your home. Um, it's something that I'm really passionate about. That's um, not clutter, but um, I'm passionate about not having clutter in my home. And I'm a bit of an organizing freak, I suppose. I like to have things organized and have things in order. And um, I, I have um, relaxed a little bit since I've had children, but it's always just been something that um, I've loved to do. It's a much better way of life living clutter free than it is having um, being surrounded by clutter. But um, that's not to say that I didn't um, live like this all of the time when uh, something does come up. I've, a life-changing event like your marriage um, breakdown or the death of a family member you know it can um, sometimes affect the um, the way you deal with clutter and you let things go and all of a sudden it becomes a big issue so I had to deal with that back in 2012 but I got back um, to how I, I like to keep things organized so um, you may have seen me posting in the group about, um, I've used the term clutteritis. I don't know how I'm going to do this with my notes. It's just flapping around in the breeze. So if I have to look, I don't want to miss anything. So I wrote some notes down um, and I'm very hot. I just had a shower and uh, it's very muggy here. So I'm just wiping my face, um, wiping the perspiration off my face and um, trying to keep cool. So um, the term clutteritis, I thought um, oh, I was being really clever and I came up with this word that um, defined uh, what how I meant, um, how I wanted to describe uh, the type of clutter that I'm talking about because I believe there is a difference between um, clutteritis and hoarding. You know, there's a lot of other underlying issues that lead to hoarding and um, it's actually um, known now as a mental disorder that's relating to other mental disorders. So we're not talking about hoarding here, we're just talking about having too much of one thing or too many things that's occupying valuable space in your home. So I thought I was being really clever by using the term clutteritis, um, but it was actually um, a term used by somebody else already and I just thought I'd better mention them. Uh, the name is um, the name of the website was Clutter Free N for Nelly C for Charlie dot com. So um, they have used that term before uh, in their um, on their website. So I just wanted to give full credit to them. Uh, let me know if you're here. Say hi and uh, make sure you stay to the end because I've got some really exciting um, news I want to. Um, share with you and also if you're not catching the broadcast live uh, make sure you just type hashtag replay in the comments to let me know that you've you've watched the video um, so uh, we've talked about clutteritis um, so it's hi Liz how are you tonight um, there's been so much in the in the media lately about um, decluttering with Marie Kondo and all the rest of it but um, when I started the group, you may remember answering some questions um, when you um, when you first joined the group, and 99% of everyone who joined the group said the main issue that they had in their home was clutter. So for well over 12 months, I've been trying to um, think of a way of how I can share um, how to deal with it. You know, 
it's not just like sweeping the floor or doing another household chore. It's something that I've given a lot of thought to and, and how I wanted to deliver the information to you. And um, that's why it's taken me so long to, to um, get to this point. But um, as it turns out with this year's theme of organize your life and C being the next letter, I thought this was the perfect opportunity to start telling you how to avoid clutter coming into your home. And it's a lot more than just um, decluttering, you know, um, people like Marie Kondo who um, have been around for a little while, I guess, I don't, you know, I've, I think I've seen maybe one of her videos of folding techniques or whatever, but um, people like my mother and my grandmother and, and women before them were managing clutter in their homes well before Marie Kondo was even um, born. It's just decluttering and managing clutter in your home is just um, a normal a normal household chore. It's just something that um, should be incorporated into your daily routine or your weekly cleaning routine. When your children outgrow um, their clothes, when you outgrow your clothes, when you can't find the lids to your Tupperware containers, when the shoes don't fit, all these little things, you action them straight away and then you don't um, and then you don't have this big problem um, later on down the track with having to, you know, I haven't even watched the Netflix shows of Marie Kondo. We don't, eat, we don't have Netflix, but, you know, people that have just got so much stuff in their homes, I don't believe that the issue is being addressed on, on how to avoid it coming into your place um, in the first place, let alone having huge rooms and cupboards of um, items to to have to declutter because you know heaven help you if you had to do that it would be a big job and it would be quite daunting so tonight I just want to talk about um, three ways that you can avoid clutter coming into your home now um, well, this is annoying I'll try and put them up here again at least I can see them as I'm talking to you um, what I want to tell you about um, ha living clutter free is that it's that feeling of living clutter free, which is how I live every day, is far more enjoyable and satisfying than that moment of that impulse purchase that you have. You know, the impulse purchase, that retail therapy that people encourage you to do, you know, it's going to make you feel better. It might make you feel better for a short while, you know, the nice shopping bag they put your your item in you take it home you try it on you you know whatever it is that you buy you use the candle or whatever and then you think uh, did I really need that no well it might get stuck to the back of your wardrobe or the back of your cupboard never to be used again and it becomes an item of clutter so um, hear me out tonight you may not like what I'm going to tell you but like Dr Phil says I love this quote by Dr Phil when he says you can't change what you don't acknowledge so if you're living in a home full of clutter and you don't acknowledge it, well, it's going to be a continuous cycle of um, clutter forming in your home and you having to deal with it and you being upset about having this clutter. So I'm going to just, you know, hit these three points. Please don't be offended. You know, I'm just trying to help. I want to help you um, live a clutter-free free life because it is really, really good. So I'll get started. Um, the first point I want to make is to make a conscious decision on every purchase that you make. So before you buy anything, make a conscious decision. Um, ask yourself, do I really need it? And when you ask yourself that, you have to um, know the difference between a want and a need. Now a need is something that I always put under the categories of food, clothing and shelter. Now, they're the basic necessities for human life. We can't live without food. We need clothing to protect our bodies from the elements. We're not monkeys or tigers or whatever that's got a built-in fur coat. We need clothes to keep us cool and we need clothes to keep us warm. I'm not talking about the latest um, Chanel designer dress or the latest Kardashians whatever um, outfit just for the sake of um, buying these things. But really ask yourself, do you need it? Um, same with shelter. You know, if you've got a roof over your head and you want 
you know, that that's all you need. As long as you've got the money to pay your bills and your mortgage or your rent or whatever, do you really need those cushions? Do you really need that new linen that is, is going to match or is going to be um, in your new decor? You know, do you really need it? Do you need matching linen? Do you need matching towels? Uh, if and I'm, I'm coming from a point of if you've got too much clutter. You know, if you don't have any problem with clutter and you need new towels or new linen and you, you, you do need it, it's got threadbare or whatever, then buy it. But if you already have a problem with clutter, you need to stop. You need to stop making these impulse purchases, make a conscious decision on um, every purchase that you make and walk away, leave it. You know, even if you do online shopping, you uh, fill your cart if you need to and then just leave it. Don't um, spend unnecessarily on purchases. Always ask yourself, do I just want this or do I need it? And it's going to help you bring unnecessary clutter into your home. Um, and, I, and I'm very much one for treating myself. You know, I, I practice me time and self-care like I tell you every week. And it's not necessarily an object that I buy. I might um, get my hair done or get my nails painted or um, go for a coffee or high tea with my girlfriends. Rather, rather treat yourself with an experience that doesn't come with a product that you've got to try and find a place for when you get home. So that's number one. Make a conscious decision every time you purchase something and ask yourself if it's a want or a need. Number two, when you're going to buy something, does it serve a purpose? Now, this also relates to um, secondhand shopping um, and new, new product shopping. There was a time there that every time I went to an op shop, like I could have been going to the op shop to um, buy something that I needed. You know, I, I, I may have needed a white T-shirt or, um, you know, some swimming um, costumes for the kids or whatever. And I'd always just have a browse around the linen because I've just got a real love for um, vintage linen. And there was a time there where I had probably 20 or 30 vintage tablecloths because, you know, I used them on the table, but I also thought, well, that would be good for a project. And my, cup, my linen closet was just full of all these vintage tablecloths. So I had to make a conscious decision, you know, does it serve a purpose? I've got plenty of tablecloths already that are serving a purpose. Why was I buying all these other ones that was just forming clutter in my home? So, um, but whether it's secondhand or new, ask yourself what, what purpose is it serving? Um, Tablecloths. Um, do you have something already that you can use um, in place of that? Like I've got or maybe 10 or, um, 10 or so different cushion covers. And instead of change, you know, going out and buying new cushions all the time, I just change the look in my home using those um, same cushion covers. They're just, you know, basic colours, um, blue, yellow, um, red, that can be easily interchanged into any room of the house or any, any look that I'm, I'm trying to achieve. It's not like if I want to change the look of a room, I've got to go out and buy all new decor. Um, what do I do with the old decor? You know, you put it in the cupboard or the back of a linen closet and think oh well I'll deal with that one day and the next thing you know you've got clutter form then it's another big job so um, also make um, ask yourself can you recycle it or can you repurpose it hello Barbara lovely to see you here tonight from snowy Yorkshire oh my goodness look at the perspiration dripping off of me um, it's dreadfully warm here tonight Barbara I hope you're keeping warm um, can you repurpose it or reuse it? Now, you may have seen some photos that I've shared in the group um, just recently about um, uh, some of the storage solutions in my home. Things like uh, plastic containers that don't have a lid, you know, they make perfect uh, drawer inserts to store makeup or hair ties or things like that. You know, you don't have to go out to the shop to buy something in particular for um, for that purpose. Look at what you've already got. And I think I wrote it just somewhere recently about how much I love boxes, cardboard boxes, your cereal boxes, your the boxes that the 
um, cookies come in, all that sort of thing. They can be repurposed as storage solutions as well. You don't have to go and buy things all the time. Uh, you've probably got, already got something in your home. So repurpose, reuse and recycle um, things that are already in your home before you go out and have to purchase um, something new. The third thing that I want to um, talk about tonight is um, throw out the junk mail. I don't know what you call it in um, the UK or if anyone's watching from the US. Just all the catalogues that come um, into your letterbox, all the coupons, all that sort of thing. Don't even look at it because if you don't see it, you, you won't... You won't even realise that you need it. Um, I haven't looked at a junk mail catalogue for about 20 years. I just put it straight into, um, get it from the letterbox and it goes straight into the um, the recycle bin because there's nothing that I need. If I need something, well, then I'll go and buy it. But when you start looking at Kmart brochures or even your supermarket brochures, you know, people think, oh, well, what's on special this week? If you're shopping at the same supermarket every single week or fortnight, however however much you do your shopping, you'll know the cycles of when the specials are coming on. They always, um, they just come in every two or three weeks. And if Woolworths has it on special one week, Coles will have it on special the next. You know, um, this is what I teach in um, my Shop Smart Eat Well program on how to save money on groceries. If you know your prices and you know your uh, cycles of, uh, the supermarket specials, well, there's no need to look at the supermarket um, catalogues when they come in the mail. Just throw them away. Wait, I, I think the last time I did look, if it was 12 pages long, 10 pages were just of packaged um, junk food. There was probably one page of meat and one page of fruit and vegetables. So, you know, you don't need to know what's in season. You know, if you don't know what's in season, just do a Google search and find out what fruit and vegetables are in season and just buy those because they'll always be the cheapest and the freshest and the best quality. So um, just throw that junk mail away. Um, so yeah, you don't need to um, look at the junk mail. You'll, you'll think, oh, I'll, I'll go there and I'll buy that. You might spend $10 and then um, by the end of it, um, you've spent thirty or forty dollars at the store and then you've got to come home and find room for it. So these were just um, three things that I wanted to talk about how to um, avoid clutter coming into your home. I'll just go over them again for the people who have um, just recently joined. Make a conscious decision with everything you purchase. Um, identify whether it's a want or a need and just focus on the needs, on your basic needs. That is until you get over all the clutter and you've got yourself a really good routine and um, you can easily manage the clutter um, in your home just like a part of your general household duties. Number two was does it serve a purpose? Ask yourself when you buy something, what is this for? Have I already got something in my home that I can use already? Can I reuse or recycle or repurpose something that I've already got? And number three was just throw the junk mail out. Don't be tempted by these purchases. Don't be tempted by um, social media, other social media accounts or Facebook groups. When, you know, one example was the um, the pie maker uh, just recently. You know, people went crazy and bought a pie maker. And, you know, you've got to ask yourself, did they have room for that in their cupboard? Was it something that they really needed or were they just buying it because somebody else had bought it. It's just like this sheep mentality that people just go and buy things for the for the sake of buying them because somebody else has and there seems to be this popularity behind it. Is there something that you can um, already use? Have you got a muffin pan that they make good pies? Um, have you got a sandwich toast or whatever? Can you can you live without uh, making pies until you get your, your home in order? You know um, there's just so many different examples. Uh, and I, please don't be offended when I say these things. Um, you know, I've just, I had my babies 14 and 12 years ago and I've just seen so much stuff come through um, like my Facebook feed or I see on social media or whatever, you know. And if you want to do these things by, 
by all means go right ahead. But one thing I saw recently was a lot of people use these. Um, sorry, it's flapping in the breeze again. Um, milestone cards. So they're a pack of cards like this. Um, and I believe you used to be able to buy them from Kmart for five or eight dollars. So when you have your baby, you're born, you know, that they're, they're one week old, they're two week old, they're three months old. So you would put this card behind beside their photo every time. I'm thinking back to when I had my babies, there's no way that I would have wanted to well, not waste my time, but I barely had time to scratch myself, let alone worry about putting a card beside my baby to take a picture of it. I very rarely, like there was no such thing as smartphones back even 14 or 12 years ago to take all these random pictures of your kids. What do you do with the cards when they're finished? You know, do you just slot them away for the next baby? What are you going to do with these things? Take the photo if you must, but ask yourself, what purpose is that? is that um, giving you, you know, are you only buying them because everybody else is doing it? I keep going on and on about it, but the, the, the feeling that you get from living clutter free outweighs any feeling of instant gratification of making that impulse purchase or following what someone, someone else is doing. It's just so liberating and it's just such a, uh, an easy way to live your life. And it allows you to have all this freedom and time and money so that you can concentrate um, on spending more time on the things that you love to do. You don't have to worry about those things. I find so much freedom in my in my everyday life that I just don't jump on these bandwagons that everybody seems to follow all the time. And I'm sorry if you don't like to hear that, but it's true. You know, you have to, like I said at the start, if you don't um, acknowledge, what did Dr. Phil say? You can't change what you don't acknowledge. If you're living in clutter and you're still buying these things that every Tom, Dick and Harry is buying, you don't acknowledge that you've got a problem with clutter and you're doing that. Well, what can I do? What can I do? What, you know, you've got to make a stance. You've got to say to yourself, I'm going to change. I've got a problem with clutter. I've, I've got a problem with buying everything that I see in, um, in my social media feed. You know, Christmas comes around. Easter's just around the corner. You know, are you going to go and buy a new Easter basket for the Easter egg hunt? I've never had an Easter egg hunt in my entire life. I've never given my children an Easter egg hunt. What's an Easter egg hunt? I've never been brought up with an Easter egg hunt. I've, you know, like if you want to have an Easter egg hunt, you do that. But these are just things that my parents never did with me. I didn't do them with my children. I didn't know I had to do them. And it's been so liberating haven't had Easter egg baskets. I've made little, when the children did believe in the Easter bunny, I'll just get a cardboard box and we'd put some little, um, oh, I don't know, little blankets or something in there and I'd put their couple of Easter eggs in there for, um, for them to wake up to. They didn't know any difference. I actually asked my daughter the other day, um, does she remember being hard done by... Um, during Christmas and Easter and did she feel like she missed out on anything she said no why what did we miss out on I said well nothing really I just haven't followed any trends and it's just been so so liberating that you don't have to bring these unnecessary things into your home you live with all that you need just like our mothers and grandparents did housework's a breeze you just you know you do your laundry you fold it and you pack it away you don't have have all these other things to deal with and when you're cleaning your home you don't have you know piles of paper and books and and things like that around or whatever wherever the clutter may be in your home so please if you want to uh, make a change um, to your life and become clutter free these are these are just some of the things that you need to do and I'm only too happy to answer any questions uh, in the in the group if you have any any questions about it but I do want to share with you something um, like I said at the start I have been working out a way of trying to um, deliver this information to you in a concise and uh, easy to understand and um, easy to implement system so I have created a course 
and I've named the course The Cure for Clutter. So it's not only a, um, it doesn't tell you how to fold things like Marie Kondo, it doesn't tell you to, you know, take everything out of your closet, everything out of your kitchen drawer to, you know, out of, out of your kitchen to declutter it. These are just simple, easy to um, follow systems that are just like everyday household chores that anyone can implement. They are simple, they're basic, they're old fashioned. They're just like, um, this is just what I've done all my life. It's how my mother lived, my grand grandparents lived. I don't think my, my grand, just thinking of my grandmother's house, there was, there was never any clutter. Everything had a purpose and she recycled like before recycling was ever even a word, you know, she was beyond, um, you know, beyond any recycling guru out there, there at the moment. But I want to tell you about this um, course, The Cure for Clutter. It's a three module course. It's delivered via email and it um, it's over the course of three weeks. So three modules over three weeks. There's no pressure, there's no um, strict schedules, there's no room by room schedules, so you don't have to start at the bathroom or bedroom or whatever. They're just simple, easy to, uh, easy to follow steps to help you um, cure you of clutter forever. So um, I wanna emphasize that. Uh, it'll touch on um, how to stop the clutter coming into your home, basically what I've talked about um, tonight, plus a few other things how to get ready, how to prepare yourself for dealing with the item, like how to um, stop feeling overwhelmed, how to make a start, how to um, handle sensitive uh, sensitive items or items, not sensitive, sentimental items. Um, I have still have so many things um, that I've got to um, deal, but it's just a slow ongoing process. And then the third uh, module is just all about how to incorporate that into your um, everyday life. And you'll be cured of clutter. You won't have to worry about this ever again. So the cure for clutter has um, just been um, released tonight. Um, it's currently 50% off until the 12th of February. So for nearly two weeks uh, until 7.30 on the 12th of February, Brisbane time. And I really want you to consider um, giving it a go. For the next two weeks as well, I'll be still um, popping up in the group telling you about um, clutter and how to um, declutter uh, certain things. I'll even be showing you how to deal with some sentimental items um, that I've got to deal with. But I'll drop the link in the group um, in this live for um, the course. Um, it's just going to transform your life. I really want you to um, find this different way of life if you're having problems with clutter um, it's just you know not everyone's blessed with the organizing gene I understand that and it might be hard for people but um, you know you've got to acknowledge if you ha if you do have a problem that um, there is a better way of, of life and, and it doesn't come from impulse shopping doesn't come from the instant gratification of shopping like and I still love shopping but like recently I we're going away to the beach for a couple days um, in a couple weeks time and I needed a new pair of togs, uh, swimming swimming togs, swimwear and um, $90 brand new these were but I knew that they always have their end of season sales well before the season finishes and I got them for 19 you know I, I could have bought them for 90 but you know uh, you've just got to know your prices and know, know when to buy things and and also, I'll drop the group, uh, drop in the this broadcast about um, the Shop Smart Eat Well program as well. Um, the link to join the group if you're not already in there, because I had someone today um, post a comment about um, hi Erin, if you're watching. Uh, they had gone, they tried out the Shop Smart Eat Well program, and she only spent 124 dollars compared to the $800 a month she normally used to spend. So um, I'm really proud of her and she's just proven that my method works and, you know, grocery shopping is just another one of those things that you can um, easily accumulate so many things in your pantry, fridge and freezer that you don't necessarily need. Hi, Jeanette, how are you? Jeanette says, 
I have started decluttering and amazing what I seem to amass. I've only done walk-in robe and ensuite and have carted out 10 bags. Well, congratulations, Jeanette. What a start. That's fantastic. Um, it's That's really, really good. It's, um, it's, it's going to be a, a long, slow process if you do have a lot of clutter, and that's okay. You can only do what you can do, but once you've got it under control, it's just another part of housework. It's just... Just like sweeping the floor, washing the dishes. When, when you outgrow something or something's broken, you deal with it straight away and um, you get rid of it and you incorporate that into your daily routine. But that's all in the course, The Cure for Clutter. I want to thank you very much for um, joining me tonight. Don't forget to check out the Shop Smart Eat Well Facebook group too because I do share my grocery shopping hauls and what I um, cook every night uh, in in that group and my budget is $150 per fortnight so um, and I still managed to feed the family pretty well I think they my husband and son seem to like it my daughter doesn't like it um, no matter what I cook she'll like it one night and then the next she won't so um, but yeah thank you very much for, for joining tonight everybody and don't forget to uh, drop any questions that you might have or send me a private message uh, I'd love to be able to help you even more Thank you very much, everybody, and um, I'll catch you again in the group soon. Bye.